A blessed day, a blessed evening to all of you, dear uh, friends who are uh, joining us in this worship at the shrine of Jesus, the Divine Word here, in Christ the King Mission Seminary. I would like to focus this reflection on the, the first reading, interesting story of the first reading. Reading these uh, accounts of the book of Saint Samuel, I realized that the success of a group is due in part, or a great part of it, to a good leader, to a good leadership. That's why the readings during these days taken from the book of Samuel revolves around the issue of leadership, a very crucial issue no? in, the book, in this book, at least one of the, the crucial issues, the selection of uh, leaders and the form of uh, governance. In the previous chapters of this book, before our reading today, we find that God acceded reluctantly the demand of the people to give them a king. They were asking God through Samuel that they should have a king like the other nations around them who had their king. But God considered this demand of theirs for a king as the people's rejection of God himself. God said to Samuel, listen to the voice of the people in all what they say to you, for they have not rejected you, but they have rejected me from being king over them. And this is the, uh, an issue that would be, we see that would become a theme also even in later books. No? The, the role of the king and uh, the role of God as king. No? And later on we would associate in our church, the Christian church, that the true king is Jesus Christ. No. Now, the idea to be no, like other nations, no, that was their, their proposition. They wanted to have a king like the other nations around them. And uh, here, the, this idea to be like other nations around them is seen as a departure of their vocation and identity as the people of God. Israel is not like the other nations, but it is to be a blessing to these nations as expressed already in the election of uh, Abraham in Genesis, for example, that you and your people become uh, a blessing to, na to the nations around you. No? That this nation is a priestly, holy, distinct people, God's chosen possession out of all the earth as they have experienced in Exodus. Now, moving towards this similarity to the other nations is seen as moving away from their calling as people of God. So God's reaction and warning to them, in fact, we find in, the, in chapter 8, I think, of the first uh, book of Samuel that God 
warned them through uh, Samuel that their king will take their sons and make them soldiers. He will demand tax from them, will take their daughters, will take their best fields and vineyards, will take their flocks, will make, will take male and female slaves. In other words, God was warning them, making clear that the institution of monarchy or the rule of kings is a wrong one. But if people insist, it will happen as it happened, tensions between God, God's will, and human freedom surfaces here. And true enough that their first king, Saul, failed as many of their kings later on. You know, in spite of human infidelity, also of Paul, God continues to bring forward the history of salvation. Saul was considered unfaithful and God rejected him, meaning he judged him as someone unable to collaborate with him in the history. Because of this, God commands Samuel to choose another one and he sent Samuel to anoint a king from the house of Jesse of Bethlehem, which we heard today in today's reading. What happens in Bethlehem is against all human logic, actually, and it highlights the freedom of God in choosing and the criteria in doing so. God does not see or consider appearances, but looks at the heart. In fact, among the seven sons of Jesse, the Lord prefers the smallest who has been neglected by everyone, and he doesn't even figure among those presented as possible candidates. Samuel has him called David and consecrates him as king with the right of anointing. But it is the Spirit of the Lord who changes the heart of this new king, David, and enables him to, to take his tasks as king. In this biblical passage, all the elements are present for the image of an ideal king called by God to realize his uh, reign. Here is grafted the so-called messianic hope, which a descendant of David, the Messiah, will bring fulfillment. That is what we believe as church. This reading provides us important lessons about leaders and electing leaders. It is crucial that we elect the right and the good leaders. Like the experience of Israel, many of their woes as, and sufferings as a people were due to the kind of leaders they have had. So they suffered exiles mainly because of the wrong moves and decisions and evil deeds of their leaders. That's why in the New Testament you would find Paul insisting that we should pray for our leaders because of their crucial role. No? The selection of David as king 
was due to the will of God. No? Who did not base his decision on appearances, but on the heart. A lesson to be learned here maybe is that as we elect our leaders, let it be our concern to discover and elect those who are acceptable to God. Or to put it in another way, let us choose as followers of Christ, leaders who would exhibit the values of the kingdom of God, the values of goodness, of integrity, truth, and service. And let us move beyond purely statistical considerations of winability of a candidate. Ah, ito siguro kasi ito yung malakas. Mananalo siguro ito. Or even geographical and ethnic affiliation. Ah, ito. Taga Ilocos. Kaya Ilocano. Eh, Iboto natin ito. Mga Ilocano tayo. O at ito. Bicolano tayo. O ito. Taga Davao tayo. Mga Bisaya tayo. Eh. I think we should move beyond these geographical and ethnic affiliations and even vested interest and consider seriously what Samuel did chose that someone according to the heart of God according to the will of God to put it simply persons of integrity Amen.